Juanita Hoyt. Juanita was born in Richford, New York. She dropped out of the Newark Valley High School in the 10th grade to marry her husband, Tim Hoyt, on January 11th, 1964. Their son, Eric, had died January 26, 1965, only 101 days after he was born, on October 17, 1964. None of the couple's other children, James, Julie, Molly, and Noah, lived past 28 months. Originally, the children's deaths were all found to be Sudden Infant Death Syndrome, or SIDS, Four of the five were less than three months old when they died. The other was two years old. At the time, not much was known about SIDS. It is an explanation most often used simply because there's no other cause or reason for a child's death. It means a little more than that the child just stopped breathing during the night. It's unusual for more than one child in a family to die of SIDS. In 1970, when Juanita Hoyt's fourth child was born, it was believed she had already lost three to SIDS. Therefore, Dr. Alfred Steinschneider, an expert on SIDS, became involved. He hospitalized both of Hoyt's last two children for observation for much of their short lives. Both died anyway. Both were autopsied. The cause of death was listed as SIDS for both. The doctor wrote a paper about the remarkable case of this family with five SIDS deaths and no survivors except an adopted son. This list seemed to strengthen the belief that something hereditary would cause a child to stop breathing. The paper was published in the Journal for Pediatrics in 1972. In a common practice, the people were referred to only by initials, not full names. In 1986, Assistant Prosecutor William Fitzpatrick read an article while researching possible defenses in an upcoming child murder case. He was immediately struck by the unlikeliness of five consecutive children dying of natural causes. He was certain that these children were murdered. In 1992, Fitzpatrick became the county district attorney and followed up on his beliefs from years before. Knowing that that doctor was also based in the same county, he checked the infant death records in the county until he found something that, that fit the facts of the pediatrics article. He found the two height children he had dealt with. He then traced their mother back home in Tioga County and notified the district attorney there was a possible murder case. After an investigation, five charges of second-degree murder were filed against Wynota Hoyt on Wednesday, March 23, 1994. They took her in for questioning that very morning. She confessed to murdering the children. Juanita claimed she felt useless because she could not stop children from crying, so she simply smothered them. The methods of killing the children could have been chosen to avoid detection, though they may also have been chosen because they were easy. Eric was smothered with a pillow at the age of three months, January 26th, 1965. Julie Marie, aged only one and a half months, was pressed into her mother's shoulder until she just stopped struggling, September 5th, 1968. James Avery, the two-year-old, was smothered with a bath towel. September 26th, 1968. Juanita 
admitted that she killed him simply because he was crying so much over his sister's death. He fought hard enough to get a bloody nose. Molly, two and a half months, smothered by a pillow, June 5th, 1970. Noah, age three and a half months, smothered with a pillow as well, July 28th, 1971. None of these children were strangled in a fit of rage. That would have left bruises. Smothering would still cause burst capillaries, but those were difficult to detect in very young children. In particular, none of them were found to look as if they were in any distress, just like they were sleeping. People just accepted the claims that a distraught mother simply found her children dead in the crib. A fifth child, an adopted son, survived and is now an adult. Hoyt said that she didn't kill him when he was a child because her husband was always around and would have seen her. Apparently, her husband's support did nothing to decrease her feelings of uselessness. What makes this case so unusual is that mothers don't often kill their own children, their flesh and blood. Even the few who do, don't make a habit out of it. One feature of this is that she continued to have children. After the second or third, she must have known she was going to end their lives. Unless, of course, she was experiencing some extreme form of denial. 1985, a prosecutor in the neighboring county who had been dealing with murder cases that were initially thought to be SIDS told one of his experts that there may be a serial killer in the area of New York. When he tracked it down, he sent all of it to forensics for review. 1994, the case was transferred in March 1994, Juanita was approached while at the post office by a state trooper. He asked for help for some research he was doing on SIDS, and she quickly agreed. She was then questioned by the trooper and two other policemen, which is where she did confess. Juanita did later recant her confession, and its validity was an important issue during the trial. An expert hired by the defense testified that it is my conclusion that her statement to the police on the day was not knowingly made and was not made voluntarily. He diagnosed her with dependent and avoidant personality disorders and opted that she was particularly vulnerable to the tactics used during her interrogation. A psychiatrist hired by the prosecution also agreed that she had been manipulated by police tactics. But nevertheless, she was convicted in April of 1995. On September 11, 1995, she was sentenced to 75 years to life. 15 years for each murder to be served consecutively. It had been suspected that that she suffered from Munchausen syndrome by proxy, a diagnosis not universally accepted in this case. Either way, Juanita Hoyt died in prison of pancreatic cancer in August 1998, serving only three years for the murder of five children.